So let's just take a moment to think about what science is and what physics is. We'll get into the math and the problems and all that stuff and the exams, but up in a science and engineering since we don't pause, what is science and what is physics? So press pause, I'm not gonna pause, but you press pause now and think about it. Come up with your definition, write it down. Got it? Good. Okay, so what is science? I mean, think about it. Why? A lot of times science students can't even say what science is because we haven't given you the time to think about that. You look it up, you go over here, what is science? Science is Latin for knowing. Knowing, omniscience means all knowing. Conscious is to be aware of with, con, science, with knowledge. Um, so I think of science, and you can have different definitions, but I think of science in three ways. One is it's a goal. So the goal of science is to know with as much certainty as we can now, because in a hundred years maybe we'll be able to know with more certainty. A thousand years ago they couldn't know nearly with as much certainty. So we want to know. When we know as much as we can uh, with as much certainty, and we push that certainty with better equipment and so on. And we do this with a process or a method, a scientific method. And real, real life isn't a cookbook like that, uh, but it is, there is sort of a guiding process of doing this, sometimes called the scientific method. And what's critical is we don't sit around and just think about the way the universe should be. We actually test it, and sometimes we're very often, we're very surprised about the way the physical world is. So it's going to take experimentation and everything is based on evidence and measurement. Right? So there's a method. And what do we do? We ask a question, we explore that question, we gather data gather and analyze data, draw conclusions, kick it around. We don't do it in isolation. We work in teams. And then there are other teams working on the same things. We compare notes. We compete. We try to publish first. All that stuff, it's a process. Um, we want to keep good notes, uh, etc., and try to find out, do are there planets going around other stars. Well, if this was 1994, we'd say, yeah, I think so, but we haven't got any evidence or we haven't got the data for that yet. It's 1996, we go, yes, we found some planets going around other stars, etc." So how do things work? What is light? You know, people for, for centuries want to know what light is, but they didn't, weren't able to, to find that out. So it's a process, a method. What's DNA? What can we do, etc.? Um, and then out of this process, we get a body of knowledge. That's our current, current best, most validated knowledge. Some stuff today is more validated than other stuff. Some stuff is cutting edge. We don't know. We're not sure. Uh, string theory, uh, you can look at that and say, well, eh, you know, working on things, working on that. Um, but other things are well known. You know, if you cut open my arm, what are you going to see? You have a pretty good guess of what's going to be in there. We can do uh, hip replacement surgeries and, and uh, organ transplants and all kinds of wonderful things because of this great body of knowledge and all this wonderful people doing this fantastic process, not of just logic being stuck in your head but actually going out and exploring in some organized way. So there's lots of types of science. Of course, there's biology and there's chemistry and they're all uh, great stuff. And there's, of course, the different types of chemistry, et cetera. We're doing physics. So the next question is, what is physics? So if I ask myself, what is physics? Then um, what I'd like you to do now is press pause and ask yourself, what about your senses? Just stop. Physics, the study of the physical world, stop. What do your senses take in? So write down a list. What senses? Okay. 
So what'd you get? And there's a lot, right? And there's a lot that you take for granted, as people do, because we're busy. We're, we're busy doing other things. We're not gonna sit, sit around here and just stand for an hour and miss our meeting because we were observing our senses. But if you think about it, like eyes, okay? Eyes, what, what do I see? I see light, all right, great. Is there light that we can't see? I mean, I don't know, how would I know? Until we start going through the process of experimental science and finding out that there's light we can't see. There's non-visible light and there's visible light. There's a huge range of light. So we explore, what is light? What is that? I mean, what else do I see? I see color. What's the difference? I see bright. What is that? What makes it bright? Um, and so on. I see reflection. I, I've got uh, I've got things like uh, magnifying glasses where I can make your toes hot, or mirrors where we can look at ourselves. Uh, what's going on with light? Uh, then there's what other senses? There, there's uh, our our ears. So our ears have senses. We, we, we we're living in this world, we hear sound. Is there sound we can't hear? Yes, there's sound that we can't hear. There's sound we can hear. But there are sounds that vibrate higher than our ears will pick up, ultrasonic, or lower subsonic vibrations. Just like there's light that vibrates higher and lower than our eyes are tuned to or can pick up. So there's a lot more beyond our senses, but even just your senses, and that's where people started, is just looking at the world. There's ears, there's eyes. What else is there? There's nose, right? So nose, what's that? I don't know, you know, that smells good. That doesn't smell good. What is that? Well, you know, as you dig through, you start realizing it's, you might look at it best with chemistry. You know, different mo molecules that set off these senses. Taste as well, chemistry. What's chemistry about? When you dig down to it, it's about the combinations of atoms, right, and how they interact. So you've got that. Then you've got the biology of that setting off uh, our nervous system and sending signals electrically through the body. So all that creates, again, much more than meets the eye, but we know that we have these senses, and then there's touch. Touching things, solid, liquid, that sense of touch. Again, sending electrical signals to our body. So what is it? What is solid? What, what are we? Um, so our senses begin this, and physics tries to look at the fundamental relationships between all, uh, excuse me, all physical phenomena. So coming over here, we've got uh, things that we can, we can study. We can study motion. Right? Very exciting motion. Uh, we can also take this and throw it, flying crabs. And then we've got uh, mass and time. We've talked about that with units. So there's things that we can we can study there. There's springs. We can say how how hard is this pulling back? So there's some forces. There's some motion there. Something I can measure and quantify and sound. There's rotations. There's things spinning and falling. Uh, there's temperature. I can feel temperature. Ah, you know, I, I pause and wait, wait, wait. I, I didn't even think that I could talk about temperature as a physical phenomenon. So, you know, I could plug this in and make this warm. What's that doing? I could touch this over here and warm that liquid up and it goes over there. I mean, what is that? What's going on? That's what physics deals with. I mean, what exactly is going on? What's the relationship between these phenomena? We've got uh, electricity. So you can light light bulbs and you can connect bulbs up with wires and you know you can start here and move to here and all of a sudden you've got your laptop and so on. So electricity is explored. Chemical processes to make batteries, other ways to get electrical energy. Um, and then of course there's magnetism. So we've got magnetism and that's Pretty weird. That one's one of the most evident things. It's like, wow, that's really crazy. I can push and pull without touching, and that's just nuts, right? I mean, that really, that's really crazy. So, what are the rules? How? What makes it strong? What makes the direction of magnetism go the way it does? 
who causes magnetism, who feels magnetism. So physics is all this stuff. And of course, you need to start from the beginning, just as historically people did. And you start with the simplest stuff and try to dial that in and explore it. And we explore that um, you know, through, uh, through our scientific method. We think of Galileo and Newton as being uh, some major players in that development. There's certainly lots of other folks that did this, Archimedes and Pythagoras and so on. So as we learn physics, that's a lot to learn. We have to develop techniques and skills. So we're going to cover some topics in this course that are the foundation for being able to talk about other things. Topics. Motion. Really, we call it kinematics analysis, the description, just describing motion. Why someone walk past you? What do you notice? How can you describe it? What can you measure? We do it just one dimensionally, forward and backward, up and down, along a line first, and then we branch out to talking about two or three dimensional motion. So we learn how to describe motion, measure it, write math equations. Then we talk about force analysis. Forces, push and pull. How can we make things change their motion? So through pushes and pulls, whether they be magnetic, electric, hand, spring, whatever the case. Um, then we learn how to do a force analysis, build a bridge, etc. These two can be rephrased in a useful way that can be easier for some situations as momentum analysis and energy analysis, different types of energy. Energy is not a thing. It's a concept. We'll see how that relates in that. But, um, so these are the foundations. I sometimes call them the four pillars of physics, the foundation of science, studying being able to describe motion and forces, and the flip side, being able to describe momentum and energy. What does that lead to us? Well, we can describe rotations, right? rotations. Your whole body is rotations. Just think of that. All you do all day long is rotate, right? So rotations, oscillations of back and forth, motion of variety, and waves. Waves, so if I oscillate this end, the string creates a wave, and I can create different waves, and I can do all kinds of stuff, and I can make music, and, and so on. So I can do waves, and I can study fluids, the properties of fluids, using fluids, plumbing, etc. cetera. Uh, air fluids, lifting huge aircraft, it's amazing. How do you do that? How do you keep a huge tanker afloat? That's insane. Gravity, universal gravity, not just gravity of things here, but planets around planets. Electric and magnetic forces, thermodynamics, temperature, what is it? How do you make something hot, cold? How do you transfer that energy? Light, atoms, and nuclei. So that's, you know, if you ask, what's physics? It's studying the relationships between these, not in a fuzzy way, but in a way that you can actually measure them and use this and put this stuff to, to neat use. I mean, I think the phones that we have in our pocket are pretty crazy and, uh, and a good thing. You know, we, can, we can put them to use in medicine and all over the place. So, let me just check here. We are getting closer. So, fundamental to all this is measurement. We need to get in the laboratory and we need to measure things. We want to find relationships that are quantitative, and I looked out my end, but measurement in the lab, experiments, numbers. We want to push our certainty. We want to know better than we have before. It's critical to do measurements. We don't do it once. We do it many, many times to see if we get the same results or some ballpark. And we don't only do it, but it gets validated by others, repetition and validation, and setting up clever measurements. And there are good measurements that were that were not good and gave completely erroneous results and misleading. So that's critical. And the last thing that I want to say, if I've got time, is physical intuition. In this class, you can hear me say, to think physics, not just math. You can write a math equation, it may or may not make sense. You can do the math correctly. Math is very general, it's powerful, it's great, it's wonderful, I love it. But when you're doing physics, it better make physical sense. So you gain a physical intuition. How much does it make any sense? 
we want to think about the physics. What is this telling me? How does it relate to this physical phenomena? So that's a very big challenge. It's not manipulating algebra. It's thinking about what the setup is. So it'll guide you to set up your equations, uh, physics, thinking of physics well, and it'll help you interpret your equations and the results of your equations. So think physics as you do your math. If you don't, you're going to be in trouble real fast. If you do, you develop a really powerful, uh, powerful intuition. So that's 15 minutes on what physics is. <laughs>